this. What floor would you like to visit? Uh, let me exit. But I wonder who this profitability person is. Should be pretty interesting to say the least. I just don't know who it is. I'm very curious to find out though. So, I don't know. Wait, hold on. Where is this? This is... I swear, this loading is pretty ridiculous, dude. Hold on. So, we can toggle inactive quests. And doesn't seem to do anything. Oh, wait. It is doing something. They're right here. So, the other two quests are actually in this vicinity. So, let's do a change right now really quick so we could do dr goodnight or lord of blight i guess we'll do lord of blight because the the uh the man who chafed is back inside the hotel and i just left that place so i'm just gonna go ahead and do this <clears throat> all right wait hold on where are we going office foreman are we going back to the ship or is that something else uh, actually i think that's where uh cedric is if i'm not mistaken pretty sure man these this looks I still really enjoy how this looks I really really do that's freaking awesome look at those I don't know why but I get the feeling like the, uh almost like borderline the Avengers almost maybe it's just me but uh I don't know I get that I get that feeling like it's like Avengers esque for some reason Alrighty, so we're, luckily it's not very far. The foreman is right here. Yeah, because this is the Harbor Master office. This is where Cedric's office is. Glad my box on days are over. Yeah? Is that right? Uh, point of interest discovered, sublight freight storage and processing. Hold on, did I pass the door? I did. Weird. This has its own interior. Excuse me, sir. Hi oh. there. Sorry, this area is off limits to port vision. Oh, wait half a second. You're the inspector. You're absolutely Sorry correct. About that. I'll buzz you right in. Thanks, sir. First things first. Let's just take a gander right here. A little tiny peek. Uh, nothing I want there. Honestly, I don't think there's anything I want over here either. Those vending machines are only good for so selling, this but this is slug houses all its completely legally obtained inventory. Hmm? Uh maybe. Alright, hold on. So this is a slug worker. Slug worker. I think these are all just generic NPCs. Can I upgrade my weapon? <clears throat> Let me see here. Tinker. Uh no, I can't. Like, not even close. This is a level 28. I need it to be a lot higher. Only because I wanted to. Wait, hold on. That's the office. I kind of want to look around, though, first. Got a SAM unit. <laughs> even though it's called Slug Worker, that's pretty funny. What's up, Slug Guard? Are you anybody interesting? Nope, you're just a Slug Guard, too. Wait, hold on. Office... Foreman. Hold on, why is it two separate things? Let me let me see the the this right here. Cedric uh can cannon head of slug gave you his alibi. He says he is he has no reason to kill Halcyon Helen. <coughs> Excuse me. It turns out Cedric has problems of his own. Someone is skimming through his warehouse. Yep, of course. So question Ella. Tinsley about the missing cargo. Ask the foreman at Sublight Freight and Storage Processing about the missing cargo. Okay, investigate Cedric's office. Okay, so Cedric's office is downstairs. We should probably search his office first. Uh, the gun display in Cedric's office containing several plasma weapons was recently accessed. It's not concrete evidence, but there's a possibility that one of the weapons was used in Halcyon Helen's murder 
Yeah, I think it's probably best if we search the office first for clues. And who knows, maybe we'll find something that's going to help us. Hold on, where is this office though? Because this is leaving the place. Urgh, this is a totally different area. Okay, screw it. We're here. We're gonna we're going to just question her. It is what it is. Excuse me, Miss Ella Tins Til what's her name? Tilsley? Tinsley. You're the inspector, aren't you? I am. Boskin Cannon said you'd be by about the cargo that's been going <coughs> missing. Gosh, this is so neat. A real-life inspector. What's that like? Have you solved any mysteries yet? Ever had to shoot a suspect? Um. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> I call it closing a case. And it is best. It is the best part of the job. No, I'm not going to go ahead and say that. Uh, we don't. Uh, we don't. Why don't we focus on stopping these cargo thefts? Right, of course. Just tell me how I can help. So, what's the culprit been stealing exactly? That's the weird part. There's no pattern, far as I can tell. The thefts don't make sense. I ask you, who would steal a handful of Spacer's Choice Savers? <laughs> so dull they can barely cut mud, but leave the spectrum black. Ugh. Who'd be desperate enough to want to steal a Spacer's Choice Saber? Full stop. <laughs> well, first of all, what's the Spectrum Black? A uh, low-class gum who can't tell Spectrum Black from Nanner Spank? I don't want to go towards the insulting route. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, the criminal mind is strange and unknowable. All our minds are strange but eminently knowable if one lets go of everything they think they know. Then there's the most recent <laughs> theft, five boxes of pens and a couple of sodas. I can't decide which one's sadder. Yeah, that's, that is strange. Five boxes of pens and a couple of sodas? <clears throat> I don't know. So weird stuff. Let me see here. Uh, see, that's a little insulting, too. I see what you mean about there not being a pattern. Well, I'm no inspector. If there is one, I'm sure you'll find it. We'll get down to the bottom of this. Who had access to all this cargo? Everyone here at Freight Storage and Processing, for a start. Thing is, the cargo is going missing before the shipments even get to the warehouse. Best I can figure, it's probably getting lost in the shipping yard. As for who has access there, Benton Chan, he's the shipping yard manager. He told me it's mainly just the loading automax that handle cargo. So we got a lead. Benton Chan. How solid this lead is, is yet to be determined, but at least we got somewhere to start. Uh... Uh, could Benton have anything to do with this? Nah. Benton's too lazy for crime. The extra work would kill him. Last time I asked him to check the automex, the whole head told me he couldn't help because he was dead. <laughs> uh, is he dead? Brain dead, maybe. But no, no. My point is that if you think the automex are a lead, you'll have to check on them yourself. Hopefully, you're mechanically inclined. So, it, it could still very much be Benton. Oh, before I forget, I figured you might want to access my terminal, so I had a spare key card made. It's all yours. Anything on there I should know about? Oh no, I forgot to delete all of those incriminating messages I sent about which cargo to steal. <laughs> nah, I do have a list of cargo that's gone missing though, if that helps any. Yeah, it does actually. Uh, she's she's very helpful actually. So this is her terminal. 
Insert Foreman's terminal key card. Uh, welcome user E Tinsley. Uh, please make a selection incoming. Sure, why not? From B Chan subject, it happened again. <clears throat> okay, let me see. Uh, it happened again. Pen, soda. It'll. I'll never understand where you get the energy to care about this shit, Tinsley. I don't know what to tell you. Pretty much the only ones uh, that handle any cargo are the auto mechanicals. You can look at them if you want, but even I have better things to do than to help you uh, exact justice on a void damned pen thief. Benton. Uh, there's more down here, so let's see. It happened again. This is the reply. <coughs> Benton. Uh, we're missing cargo again. Just random shit. This time, we lost five boxes of blue pens and a couple of purple berry sodas. I can't see a pattern. We got all those Deadeye Mark IIs in, in the other day, and not one of them went missing. So, it's not like the skimmers going... For the most expensive cargo, far as I can tell, shit's getting skimmed from the crates before they make it inside freight storage and processing. Could someone be breaking into the shipping yard at night, you think? Ella, you know, it, it's probably getting, something's probably happening, happening in between, you know, said locations. Return to incoming, B Chan subject, seriously? <clears throat> Ella, tell whoever snuck over to the shipping yard and messed with the loading automex to go to hell, will you? Those things break down enough as it is, and I'll be damned if I'm going uh, to haul cargo around myself. So, outgoing. This one's malfunctioning automex. In case there must be a problem with the Automex, I'll swing by when I can and see what's uh, malfunctioning. Besides you, ha ha ha. Stupid. All right. Anyways, uh, so this is to okay. This is the replies to the previous. Okay. So okay, but you have to admit it's a little funny to see an Automex dance. Not my fault. They're so damn easy to hack. Seriously. A primal could do it. Huh. Here's a list of what's gone missing so far, or at least everything I've noticed. See what I mean about there not being a pattern? Eight cases of purple berry punch, two boxes of pen, blue specifically, uh, 16 pallets of cacao milk. <clears throat> 300 small portrait images. This is all this is all 100% random stuff. Mark 7 uh, cranial pro protectors, 7 sets of protective clothing with safety harnesses, aramid ballistics, 2 cases of lemon slap, 10 spacer's choice sabers, 25 cases of blasting agent, 3 boxes of dark matter bars, 4 cases of nanner spank. I ask you, Benton, who would steal a uh, who would steal Nanner Spank, let alone pictures of Spencer Woolrich? If the thief if the if the thief wasn't skimming from Cedric Ken McCann, uh, McCannon, a uh, Kin Cannon, I don't know why I had such a hard time reading that. Uh, of all people, I'd figure they were doing it for kicks and giggles, or maybe revenge. Dun dun dun. There's no way I'm gonna be hacking that thing. Okay, so we're we got somewhere, I think. I think it's pretty safe to say that Ella Tills Tinsley is not the culprit, but we're not gonna root anybody out just yet. It does sound like the Automex were were to blame to certain to a certain extent. Uh, but I guess we'll find out here in a little bit. So while we're here, obviously we're going to be searching what's his name's Cedric's, uh, office. I should have, I should have really searched this first, to be honest, while we were out here. Alright, uh, so that's Cedric. <clears throat> Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. 
All right, let's see what we have here. This copy of TK contains 142 fewer pages than a standard copy. The missing pages were likely removed to create sufficient space for the hidden listening device inside. Hidden listening device? So it's someone spying on Cedric. Who's it transmitting to? Transmission receiver location unclear. Inspector, please consider speaking into the device in order to trace the transmission and reveal the receiver's location. <laughs> I like this one, to be honest. If this was my normal character, this is probably what I would say. But since this is my dumb character, Moo. Poor Wooly Cow impression transmitted. Transmission <laughs> analysis complete. While the precise location of the receiver could not be pinpointed, it has been narrowed down to a smaller, approximate range. Well, first of all, how long has this been here exactly? Analysis inconclusive. However, there is a minor accumulation of dust particles present on the book's uppermost surface. So, examine the dust. No, we're so tasting the dust. It tastes slightly dusty. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. Really, it's dust. We lick it. Of course, it's gonna taste dusty. Oh my god. So let's see. Uh, well, we're glad we got that resolved. You have some unorthodox methods, Inspector. <laughs> Thank you. So let's examine this time thoroughly the dust. Ninety-eight point three percent of the dust particles are less than five hundred micrometers in diameter. Oh, okay, thank you. This unit is glad to have been of service, Inspector. So let's see the surrounding area. The area within a 0 0.5 meter radius of the book possesses a dust coating comprised of at least twice the number of particles. It's not very dusty then. Must have been placed fairly recently. Wild guess. The bug was planted roughly a week before Helen's death. That is highly likely, <clears throat> Inspector. Well, that concludes that. What's that you found? No. Nope. Wait, don't tell me. Let's save it for the big reveal once you've solved the case. I mean, if you insist. Okay, th that's interesting, though. We have no real solid leads. Just, I mean, we do have leads, but... Nothing too spectacular. Nothing too solid. The most solid we have is probably the Automax, but even then, it just kind of it's it's just kind of a question mark. Who's this person? Spacer? Slug's got a cozy operation here, but I like the ground timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Transmission endpoint discovered. The receiver in this book matches the transmitter to the listening device found in Cedric's office. Interesting. It's somewhat grime covered. Um. Any clues as to who put it here? Due to the high level of foot traffic in this area, this unit is unable to determine who placed the device. Ew! How long has this been uh, on the ground? Please don't taste the dirt this time. <laughs> The receiver has been present since approximately a week before Helen's death. <laughs> I'm so... I love the fact that Felix acknowledged the fact that we tasted the dirt uh, on the other book. That's hilarious. Take the receiver. Good. So we're getting somewhere, definitely. Where does this go? Hacked auto mechanical. It's not going to attack me, is it? Oh, that scared me. I swear I thought I was about to fight. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Inspector, this loading auto mechanicals programming does not match factory default settings. The standard defensive protocol has been modified to include an additional trigger. Hmm. Additional trigger. Define standard uh defensive protocol. 
For type K-19 cargo transport auto mechanicals, <coughs> defensive protocol is triggered by attempted interference with cargo or its transportation or attempted destruction of the unit. Once triggered, defensive protocol targets the perpetrator and applies lethal force until the target has been deceased for a minimum of three minutes. What? Okay, let me see. Uh, well, let's identify... We'll save this one for a second, so scan for signs of unusual behavior. Slug auto mechanical maintenance records indicate this particular unit is frequently reported as out of position or missing for periods of time. Got it. So this thing has been outside, working outside of its normal duties, it seems like. So identify the new trigger. There is a directive in place to initiate defensive protocol should an unsanctioned data log installed in this auto mechanical be removed. Data log, you say? So let's have a look inside this uh, mech then. Do we have to destroy it? Loading auto mechanical unit K14 is fully operational at 99% power. <laughs> Please designate the cargo to be transported and its destination. How can this auto mechanical assist you? Uh, I'm here to look at your data logs. Certainly. Access panel is now unlocked. Why do I get the feeling he's going to attack me? <laughs> oh, oh the, since, yeah, this is definitely happening. Mash all buttons and hope one of them does what you want. Ejecting data log 17 <laughs> alert. Fail safe protocol triggered. Kill mode initiated. Oh, God. To end user. Uh, wait, 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 I have questions. Understood. This unit is programmed to facilitate <laughs> user queries. Kill mode, pause. User termination to follow. Well, this is, uh, this is gonna be bad. What's on the data log you just ejected? The ejected data log contains instructions to move cargo shipment 6, 8, 7, 5 outside the boundaries of the shipping yard. It also contains instructions to move randomized cargo shipments outside the boundaries of the shipping yard at intervals of one to four days. Huh. So what was shipment 6875? Uh, Apologies. This unit does not have access to cargo inventory lists. Okay, that's interesting. Who gave the direct the directive? Kill mode. Re-engaged. Have a nice day. <laughs> oh, I'll have a nice day, alright. Oh god, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Let's go! Okay, good, he's dead. Also, you, die. Let's go! Felix is down. Oh god. Let's loot this guy first. I guess it's all up to me. Come on, buddy. Get out of here. Sicho stinky. Oh, he's not dead yet. He's definitely dead now. Thanks for nothing, Felix and, and Vicar. Alright, so at least we got somewhere. It definitely was the auto mechanicals. But it was given the directive. So my question is, who's behind the auto mechanical stealing? Hold on. Return to Cedric and inform him that you've solved the slug skimming problem. But I haven't though. Have I? I don't know if I want to turn this in. I feel like there's more information I could get. Something feels like I'm missing. Kind of like that one mission <laughs> that I turned in on accident. Uh, where I should have talked to that one girl uh, about... the I can't remember his name. But somebody died and he fell on his head. There was a slug inside. Yeah. It was definitely... Like, the more that I thought about it... Afterwards, obviously, after I got more information... That was definitely... That one situation where in the uh, 
fields with all the slugs and stuff. I don't know. Kind of felt bad for accusing her. Inspector. <clears throat> to Let me see here. I owe the pleasure. So, I solved your skimming issue. Ooh, I love this part. The big reveal. So tell me, what happened? Uh, you've got a serious security problem. What makes you say that? Well, first of all, someone's spying, and then they're using auto mechanicals to steal your stuff. So the culprit is using your automatic uh, auto mechanicals to skim your cargo. Hacking the automex. So that was our skimmer's game. But why? Everything that was stolen has seemed random. I certainly see no pattern. The culprit didn't want you to. It was a cover-up. Actually, I think this is probably the case. This, the theft was random, except for a single shipment. So, our culprit had something specific they wished to acquire and used the random theft as a smokescreen. I must say, Inspector, you've done excellent work on this case. Then that just leaves how the culprit knew where their true target would be, or indeed, that slug would soon possess it. This guy, this has me. I think I'm gonna do this. Check your pocket. Okay, that's very impressive. Don't ever touch me again. <laughs> Am I right to think what you found in my office earlier was the other half of this listening device? Uh, you are correct. Sure was, and whoever, uh, whoever this device belongs to is our culprit. Not quite, Inspector. That listening device belongs to me. I lent it to Halcyon Helen to assist her with role research. Huh. That is indeed an interesting development. But she can't be... Because she's dead. You know what? The more I think about it... Ah, huh. Let's go with this for now, but I'm starting to raise some suspicions. Yes, I do realize that. Thank you. You'll recall the thefts began in the week leading up to her death. Plenty of time to hack an auto mechanical and program it to steal. She must have died before she could turn it off. Unbelievable. <clears throat> I helped her. Gave her whatever she needed. I thought we were doing each other a good turn. Hmm. Corporate sabotage, perhaps? I can't begin to guess at her motive. If it was to spit in my face, she'd be pleased to know she succeeded. This is a betrayal, Inspector. I do not take betrayal lightly. Helen should consider herself very lucky indeed that she is already among the dead. And that some other bastard beat me to putting her in the ground. Definitely right here. Nobody put her in the ground. She was on the ground, uh, the grand ballroom floor. I'm going to pretend you're joking. <laughs> as you said before, she's dead. If I'd known Helen was stealing from me, I may very well have killed her or had her killed. Alas, I did not. That's for me to decide. Indeed. <clears throat> Incidentally, feel free to stop by after you clear me as a suspect. I won't even say, I told you so. <laughs> Though I can't vouch for Eileen, I wish you luck with your investigation. Though I doubt you'll need it. You'll find Helen's murderer. I'm confident of that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must find a way to excise my anger that minimally damages my business empire. I expect it will involve shooting quite a lot of guns. Sounds like fun. Okay, so... When I was talking to him, I actually... Something popped in my head. I, I think I want to go inspect the body right now. That's the only way that's going to clear me a little bit because... Halcyon Helen supposedly dead, but every single thing that's happening... Somehow Halcyon Helen or Ruth Bellamy is involved. 
or at least evidence points to her. Whether it's someone who died using the weapon that she uses primarily, which by the way, we've never found the weapon yet. So that suggests that's potentially still in her possession should she be alive still. Then we have this situation in which she was basically messing with Cedric McKin uh, Kincannon. I, I have suspicions. I kind of, I want to go, I think that's what I'm going to do next. So Lord of Blight. I don't want, uh, well, let's go turn this in first. And then we're going to go do the, the man who chafed. I think that's important to me right now. So let's go back to the region. Can I just go straight to my room? OMG. Give. I swear this map is absolutely horrible. Not gonna lie. Come on. <laughs> this is horrible. My god, dude. I really hate this map. I really, really do. The sad thing is that on PC, if you're playing on keyboard and mouse, it's so much easier to choose what you want, but if you're on a controller, or just plain simple in on console, it's horrible. This map is horrible. The game is great though, not gonna lie. I absolutely love this game. But this is definitely a game that is probably better to play on PC. Which, again, I kind of regret not playing on PC. God, these guys are so disgusting. <laughs> I feel so bad for them. Wait, hold on. Oh, wh where'd you come from? Come here. I missed every single hit. Where do they go? That's the last of them! Spectrum Vodka Red? Sure, why not? That was... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. This is weird. Very weird indeed. But then, you know what? The, but we do have her body. I really am interested. I really want to go... Find... Uh, I really, really, really want to go check out the autopsy with Dr. Fe uh, good, good night. I really want to. I, I really need to, actually, because I'm starting to get some really weird suspicions here. Inspector. So I looked into Cedric. Closely, I trust. Tell me what you found. Uh, well, I'm about to disappoint you just a tad bit. He kind of sort of has an alibi that checks out. Of course he's got an alibi. He runs Sublight Underground. He probably starts his day by preparing half a dozen alibis. With that in mind, do you think Cedric was responsible for Helen's death? To be honest, no. I, I don't. He was pretty truthful in the whole, you know, situation that he was describing about how he was torturing a guy. That's, that's all very weird things to just... Uh, I guess plain and simple admit. Uh, you know, he was he's clearing himself of a crime because he was committing a separate crime, essentially. I, I don't I really don't think it's him. Really don't think. He was torturing a guy at the time of Helen's death. I can't see past that al uh that alibi. Fair enough, Inspector. I won't try to influence your judgment any more than I already have. Unfortunately, even I don't have the authority to detain Cedric. His line of work is dangerous, though. There's always a chance for an accident. Huh. That's a very odd thing for him to say. If he's supposedly not a killer. I swear on everything, dude. This guy is starting to rapidly become my prime suspect. He is very... Suspicious, to say the absolute least. Sorry to disappoint you, Lu uh, Ludovico. He's alive and well. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I've already lost Dr. Blossom and Constable Keen, but at least 
Cedric's alive. The universe is a just place. Yeah, see? He did not sound satisfied for that result at all. It was almost as if he wants Cedric to die. I can... I can accuse him? I'm not going to do that yet. He is my prime suspect as of now, but I'm not going to go ahead and accuse him yet since I don't have any solid proof of that. So I'll be back. All right, so next thing we are going to be doing the man who chafed. Although I do want to do the profit of profit of the product, the productivity queen. But yeah, let's go. Let's go this. Hold on. What is this? Name the murder. So I'm assuming this is the last mission or at least getting ready for the last mission. Uh, you've investigated two suspects in the case of Halcyon, of Hel of Helen's death. You're making progress. If you believe you know, uh, the name of the murderer, speak to Administrator Ludovico and make your accusation. Otherwise, continue your investigation and look into any additional suspects. Yeah, I'm not ready for that. Although, I, again, I do think... I do think it could be Ludovico, man. I really do. But who knows? Maybe we'll find some brand new things to make accusations of, right? Hold up. Oh, duh. I don't know why I left. I totally forgot that it was inside. I really need to... But then again, if Halcyon Helen is still alive... It's probably her. How do I get up there? Right now, though, seeing this body is probably going to ease my mind. Now, see, that goes back to Eridano's. Ah! How do I go upstairs? Uh, there's something over here. See, that goes back to Erdanos as well. Oh, wait a minute. There's a... There's a memorial. That's... That's cute. I like it. But how do I get upstairs? That's that's my real thing right now. <laughs> I don't know how to get up there. Oh, there we go. Found the stairs. Alright. So I gotta go all the way around, apparently. Excuse me, Mr. and Mrs. Hotel Guests. It's weird that they have the autopsy right here. That's... that's definitely her. Quietly now. That definitely looks like her. Kind of. It does look like her. I'm not going to go ahead and assume anything. Because it does look like Halcyon Helen. But let's see what Dr. Goodnight says. Inspector, not a moment too soon. I've just finished my autopsy report. Good. Let's hear it. Would you mind washing your hands before you give me anything? <laughs> well, let's be... Let, let's just let's hear it. Ruth Bellamy was killed by plasma damage to the upper vertebrae, the occipital bone, and the cerebellum. If it's any consolation, her death was instantaneous and painless. I've also discovered a poisonous compound in Miss Bellamy's stomach lining ingested during her last meal. Toxic, but not enough to kill her. Spencer Woolrich complained of a stomach ailment around the same time period. I assumed he was being, you know, Spencer. But now I'm not so sure. She was poisoned? That's interesting. Someone was obviously trying to poison Helen. Almost certainly. Well, possibly they were trying to make her extremely uncomfortable, but I suppose killing her would also satisfy that criterion. Potentially. Man, that is in that is very interesting, dude. This plot just thickens like at every corner, doesn't it? Uh, you sure it wasn't just the hotel food? The thought occurred <clears throat> to me. I tested this hypothesis by vacating the contents of my stomach and testing for the presence of the same toxin. 
slightly elevated levels of mercury and an alarming amount of blue food coloring. But other than that, no, I'm certain it wasn't, as you put it, just the hotel food. You did what? I did science. You know, my profession. By experimenting on yourself? Strange, but okay, sure, why not? Uh, I should go speak with Mr. Spencer then. Conversations with Mr. Woolrich tend to spontaneously transform into monologues. You'll find him in the VIP <laughs> desk floor. I'd best return to work, Inspector. Autopsies always whet my appetite, and all this talk of food is distracting me. Okay, I'll get back to work then. That... That's definitely her, man. That's definitely her, so... That means my primary suspect is none other than Ludovico. It's gotta, it's gotta be him. Hi, long time no talk. Wait, who's this? Why, hello there. Goodness. Oh. I always enjoy seeing guests, but it's been so long since I've chatted face to face. It's the elevator lady. I out of my skin at the sight of you. Excuse me. I should introduce myself, though you might know me already, just not by name. I'm Bellhop Sullivan. You've likely heard my dulcet tones through the elevator intercom. Yeah, her, her, uh, her joyful tone plus her voice kind of made it obvious that she was who she is. Yeah, I recognize your voice. Pleased to finally meet you. Oh, that's so nice of you to say. I'm glad to meet you, too. Now that our introductions are out of the way, do let me know if I can help you with anything. Uh, so you said you operate the, uh, elevator, right? Can guests not press the buttons themselves? Well, yes, but having an operator certifies that the right guests end up on the proper floors. We wouldn't want toss ball players rubbing shoulders with CEOs. It'd be anarchy. Plus, that's fair, I suppose. The risk a guest chips a nail or loses a <laughs> ring or a button. It's an extra effort, but the Grand Colonial prides itself on personalized service in all things. <laughs> that and the elevator oh God. still works if I'm ever not around. I do take occasional breaks and sleep every so often. That second half was absolutely ridiculous. Their concern is that people might chip their nails but anyways so i assume the bellhops all know each other any gossip about norville <laughs> oh yes norville's great always ready to help any and all guests who might need it and so handsome too his judgment sometimes leaves something to be desired i will say kept badgering halcyon helen prior to her death about an autograph or something a little beyond his station do you know anything about Halcyon Helen's murder? Unfortunately not. I was in the operator room for the elevator, as usual. The camera feed only allows me to see within the elevator, which always has many people coming through. For what it's worth, the murder was a right shame. I always enjoyed the serials starring Ms. Helen, though I did find them prone to repetitive plot structures. But I'm sure you've heard the rumor about what actually did her in. That marauders got into the hotel and management is covering it up so the guests don't run off? <laughs> okay. Do you guys have a marauder problem? We can start there. Well, not necessarily. But there you go. But they're fairly prevalent on the other complexes. It wouldn't take much for them to find their way here. Well, that's fair. Slug claims they've got the problem under control. But I don't understand why they haven't simply gone and exterminated all of the marauders like the vermin they are. Because they're people? Oh, well, I'm just here to push buttons. You don't exterminate people. You arrest them. Although, this is... This is, uh... Halcyon we're talking about. Alright. Back to this. The colonial front desk warmly welcomes you, Inspector. It's a pleasure to see you again. Thank How you. How may I be of assistance to you, Inspector? I actually need access to the VIP guest room. I'd love to, Inspector, but I don't really have the authority. Moreover, the guests were promised exclusivity. If I let you up there, I'll never hear the end of it. 
do I even... I mean, I don't really have a choice. I'm sure there's another way, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Oh, how careless of me. Actually, that's not the only way I was careless. I just remembered you have VIP access rights. As a... A special guest of Slug. Let me just set you up with VIP nice. guest floor access. Done. You can now come and go as you please. Thank you. But I wanted to talk to you about something really fast. So the penthouse that you put me in uh, was a pigsty, basically. Oh my. Well, that is certainly odd and alarmingly unacceptable. Allow me to check the service records. Ah, yes. Not to worry, Inspector. It was indeed cleaned for you. Except for the evidence, which is oh. all Helen's stuff. Okay, that's fair. All right, later. So we are to speak to Woolridge. Hello there, my inordinately... Oh. <laughs> you the <laughs> one who visited me. I Hello, hey. Ken. Thanks so much for brightening my day. What authorized floor can I bring you to? Long time no talk. Uh, I would like to go to the VIP guest floor, please, if you don't mind. If you see Black Hole Birdie, be sure to get an autograph for me. Oh, just joking, I've already got one. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't have say seen him anyways, because he's not here. We've spoke to him before. So, Ri uh, Rizzo's Rangers. Can I talk to these guys? You hear about that stunt with the woolly cows? Birdie Holcomb's the greatest hacker in the league. Okay, if you say so. So it looks like I'm supposed to go this way. But since it is over here, I kind of want to go the opposite direction really fast. Just to do some quick uh, snooping. Who's this guy? Zeke Hannigan? Zeke Hannigan. Rizzo's Ranger's 16th back. Pleased to meet you. What can I do for you? 16th? I have some questions about Halcyon Helen's murder. Oh, you must be that inspector people have been talking about. It's a damn shame about Miss Helen. She was always real good to me and the rest of the Rangers. Bertie's taking it pretty hard. Miss Helen was the love of his life. Yeah, no, we've so met. what did you want to know? Uh, so where were you at the time of the murder? I'm ashamed to admit it, but... Me and a couple of the other Rangers spent the night in Constable Keen's cells down at the spaceport. We didn't do anything serious, just a bit of pranks and vandalism. It's what usually happens when we all get to drinking. Guess Constable Keen saw things a bit differently and had us hauled off. Unfortunately, I can't corroborate with that story or verify that story seen as she's dead, but okay. So, was Birdie in jail there with you? This should be a no, no because... He lost him somewhere along the way. Or maybe he managed to get away? I because we already know. Remember. But he was definitely not sharing a cell with us. That much I know. Yeah, we, we know all about him. We've already spoken to him. So this kind of just goes along with his alibi. Uh, so tell me about Birdie and Helen. Oh, Birdie was mad about Helen. He was certifiable. The big galoot loved Helen about as much as he loved the game. Trouble is, Birdie was not blessed with an abundance of temper. We Helen also know that. Steady. If he lost his temper around her, it'd be because something broke between the two of them. Do you think Birdie could have killed her? What? Law, no. Birdie's got a fierce temper, but there's no way he'd ever have laid a finger on Miss Helen. But what makes you say that? I mean, to be 100% fair, a temper is... is something to go off of. You know what I mean? It's like, it, he could have very much killed her. Huh. Can you think of anyone who would have killed her? Miss Helen was outspoken. She made her share of enemies on account of her expressing herself. Just between you and me, I heard rumors the Prophet never much cared for Helen's brand of blunt honesty. Ah. So that gives us even more incentive to go look at the Prophet of Profitability. So let's talk about something what else. I do for you? How long have you been with the Rangers? About half my life. You know I was named third most profitable investment on two non-consecutive seasons? Ain't a lot of players who can make that claim. Except for the guys who came in first and second, I guess. 
<laughs> I spent the last season injured and almost got sold to the Hephaestus Hammers, but now I'm all convalesced, ready to lay into some Cleo darlings, you know? Really break some legs. I kind of wish we were... We could have seen a game in action. That would have been pretty cool. So what brings you to the Rangers? Uh, well, so what brings the Rangers to Eridanos? Since it's the off season, we're helping support the launch of Rizzo Spectrum Brown. Meet the fans, sign toss ball cards, that sort of thing. How about you, fella? You after a signature? Nah, I think I'll pass. <laughs> He's just being coy. Anyway, where was I? Just between you and me, Rizzo's ought to cancel the whole event out of respect for Miss Helen. So I guess Felix isn't a fan of Rizzo's Rangers. Alright, good to know. Definitely good to know. I don't see anything of significance. Classic semi-formal. Doesn't seem... Doesn't seem very unique. And I'm not getting any... Thing to pick up. Black and violet? Eh, not important. Let's see what's in here. What? Oh, I guess this is what the Rizzo's Rangers people right there by the elevator was what? talking about. How? <sighs> Never mind. I don't think <laughs> I want to know. Seriously, though, why the hell is there... Uh-oh. What's this? Multiple discrepancies detected. First discrepancy. A woolly cow is present in this hotel room. Woolly cows are an import species for the Wilderness Exploitation Reserve and are incapable of affording upper-class accommodations. <laughs> Second discrepancy. This woolly cow is dangerously inebriated with Rizzo Spectrum Vodka. <laughs> Alcohol sanguinization ratio exceeds recommended maximum. <laughs> so we got a drunk cow in a place where it it personally couldn't afford. Oh my god, is <laughs> <laughs> this game is so ridiculous. I love it so much. So, and the recommended maximum blood alcohol ratio for a woolly cow is... Zero. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> a brief survey of this area reveals that the most recent occupants were athletes belonging to the Rizzo's Rangers Tossball Club. Yeah, we briefly heard them make a comment about this in passing. While we came to this floor. Uh, so was Black Hole Birdie here? Insufficient data. A brief survey of localized property damage. Divided by the area of this room. Yields the following estimate. This unit was likely occupied by every member of the Rizzo's Rangers. Minus one. Black Hole Birdie, of course. Okay, so... That was... That was so strange. Okay, so nothing special here. Fall plaid collection. We got a hat. Plaid collection. And a brimmed hat. What is going on here? Is this... What do... Uh... I don't think I want to know. Let's get, <laughs> Let's get out of here. <sighs> Wait, hold on. Is this... No, they're on the other side, right? So can I even... Nope, I can't. What about this side? Who's this? <gasps> He's back here. Hey, what's up? Long time no see. Hotel rooms don't feel like home until you mess them up some. This one's real cozy. I have a few more questions for you. What do you want to know? Uh... Why do you have the mascot pull that little stunt over the recording in Helen's room? I oh, yeah. I remember sending her the recording, but law, I was halfway to preserved by then. I don't know what was on it. When I realized what I'd done, I panicked. If I'd said something dumb, folks might think I was involved in her death. I was scared of looking suspicious. Well, it's... To be fair, it's definitely, definitely in, uh, suspicious. It's not very incriminating, though. It's just highly suspicious. Uh...
Concealing evidence is a crime, you know that, right? Like I said, I panicked. Okay, is there anything else I could ask her? her? Oh, ask him about her? What was your relationship like with her? Look, you and me, we both know I'm a big, dumb tossball star, right? Facts. That's what I'm <laughs> good at. Rizzo's knows it. The fans know it. Helen, she saw me as more than that. She saw someone who had more to offer than big muscles and a signature black hole stomp. Being with Helen was magic. She was magic. There ain't good enough words for something as special as what we had together. Aww. So why did you guys break up? I wish I knew. <clears throat> Must have been something I did. At the picnic, Helen just kept saying she didn't want to drag me into her world. Maybe one of the higher-ups in motion pictures was giving her trouble over us? I don't know. I tried to understand, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know either. Besides the fact that he lost his temper, apparently, because we did find the uh, toss ball stick that was broken. And if him and her were dating, I'm, I'm almost certain that's what happened. Is that he lost his temper, broke the stick. Uh, did she have any enemies? Rival actresses, maybe? I don't know too much about the motion picture industry. Except for Helen's pictures, obviously. <laughs> Those I probably know by heart. Seen them about a hundred times each. You know what else I just thought of, too? That's probably where the breakup happened. Is at the picnic, and he lost his temper, and he broke his stick, and probably left. Uh, let me ask you something else. What do you want to know? About Auric West. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. That was a weird way to answer that. So first of all, what's his deal? Auric's a businessman. He sells stuff you can't get elsewhere. <clears throat> Alternative stuff. Ah, We're talking illegal things. Sort of science, crockery, whole supplements. I see. And why would someone buy whole supplements? Maybe putting effort accelerators in your body isn't always the right call, you know? Maybe there are other options. Maybe I don't take all the accelerators Rizzo's pushes on me. Mm. I get it. So you want to keep your fringe medical options on the down low. People get worked up about this kind of thing is all. Not that my personal business should be any concern of theirs. Yeah. So where can I find him? Oric hangs around the spaceport most days. Since he's not here at the bar, he's most likely over by the <laughs> buy bunks at the shipping yard. Eh, just out of curiosity. What's it like being a famous tossball player? Tossball was, is, and always will be the greatest game in the universe. And I would give it up in a heartbeat to have Helen back. Yeah, I just don't get that vibe that he's a killer. I, I definitely know that he's got temper issues. We found evidence of it. Plus, other people are, you know, are saying the same thing. Are accusing him of the same. But neither myself nor other people seem to think that he has the capability of not just murder in general, but murdering or laying a finger in general to, to, uh, to Ruth. I don't, I just don't get that vibe from him. I'm going to click on this, but I'm not going to read it. There's a... Man, this guy has some drinking issues. Uh, no. That's not unique. That's not unique. And there doesn't seem to be anything else up here. So that's everything, right? Let's check out these vending machines before we go and talk to the homeboy. Mr. Woodridge. Okay. I think that's everything. I can't get in here. Let's go ahead and try to get in here really fast, though. Uh, do I not have my hacking thing on? I mean, my lockpick? I didn't bring my hack- my, uh, lockpicking thing. That- that is not cool. But okay. 
All right, well, let's go talk to Mr. Woodridge. Hold on, there's, there's another side. Let's do this real quick. Oh, what the hell? Bur, Burbage 3001? Initiating banter protocol. Now simulating familiar and welcoming demeanor. Burbage 3001 is trained to recognize all board approved actors. Greetings, fellow star. Your performance in Maverick oh. Johnston's latest drama was memorable. Oh, that is impressive. He recognized me from the mission we did in Byzantium. That is cool. Uh, I'm curious. Flat uh, yep, I'm a star. Flatter me. Uh, like you, like it's in your programming. Initiating sycophantic protocol. Generating <laughs> random flattery table. Where do you get your inspiration? This unit would like to talk to you about your craft. This unit has been programmed <laughs> to simulate envy. Flattery table exhausted. Sycophantic protocol ended. <laughs> Reverting to default behavior, grieving, and despair. Oh, Cassian <laughs> Helen, you will be missed. He sounds ridiculous. Oh my god. You knew her? Burbage 3001 was designed to disrupt Halcyon Helen's monopoly over the Aetherwave serial market. This unit's programming is based on Helen's most famous roles. Burbage 3001. Anything Halcyon Helen can do, this unit can do slightly worse. <laughs> At least he's honest with himself. Uh, does that include dying? I- what? I wouldn't call that motive. Does that include dying? This unit has been programmed to simulate existential dread. Watch Burbage 3001 contemplate its mortality. In the critically acclaimed drama, <laughs> waiting for results, this unit has not yet completed its grief cycles, randomizing despair tables. Oh, Helen, is there no justice in the <laughs> world? Oh, this is so ridiculous. Okay, let's go. That's freaking hilarious. What is that? Is that... Is that blood? It's, uh, it doesn't seem like blood. Okay, so it's... Okay, it's cool in tanks. From the robot, I'm assuming. But that's disgusting. Uh, what is this? Oh, Burbage 3001. That is hilarious, dude. That's his biggest role, I suppose. Titus Androidicus. <laughs> Titus and Droidicus, that's hilarious. Anything in here? None of this is to set to steal or owned. Ooh, some Oxonians. Very nice. Okay, well, there doesn't seem to be much of anything here. So let's go talk to Mr. Woodridge now.